Welcome back. We look forward today to begin <coughs> a brand new chapter, which is the third chapter in Yeres HaTshuva, the presentation of repentance, the epistle of repentance, which is, um, as you recall, those who are following along, the Yeres HaTshuva is the third segment in the Sefer Atanya. There's five, Rukot Yalmarim, Shani Chavamoni, Yeres HaTshuva, <coughs> we merited to conclude the entire Lukut Yamarim, which when usually when you say Tanya, primarily, predominantly, it's referring to Lukut Yamarim, and then we, as well, we we uh, we merited to conclude the entire Shaykh Vemuna, and we're holding on this third segment, which is a segment of twelve chapters. Though uh, the third chapter, we have quite a few classes because. The Alt Rebbe makes, clarifies, and dissects in great detail, elaboration, and articulation the subject subject of tshuva, like probably never before, in that clarity, that transparency, and the ability to really not only do tshuva but live tshuva, to hold on to tshuva, to live. There's an expression, kol yom of a yid is all his life um, in, in the mode of tshuva. Does it mean that he's always sinning? Of course not, because what's the point? Kol yom of uh, would apparently say, well, he's always sinning, so he always says to tshuva. Understandably, when it, the, the, uh, when it is um, written, this expression, for a yid to incorporate this kol yom of b'tshuva means, understandably, it doesn't mean that he's continuing to sin, but his whole life he's in a state of tshuva. Tshuva, for that matter, doesn't even mean repentance. Tshuva means return. A yid returning to HaKadosh Baruch Hu uh, al in this uh, unique work, like the entire Tanya, as we mentioned many times, the Tanya, as we try to give it that uh, term or that description, the perfect manual to Abayi Hashem, to life in general, but particularly to Abayi Hashem, the perfect manual. So when it comes to Geras HaTshuva, it's equal. The al Tereb is an uh, inimitable um, style and perfection, if you will, um, dealing with any matter of Teir Mitzvah. In this case, the Geras HaTshuva, um, in this Geras HaTshuva, in this presentation, so we we did mention you guys. The Trimah has albeit uh, 12, 12 chapters. We're holding now in the third. We have quite a few classes because again, it Al uh, Trimah you know comes through many of the subjects of Chuva, establishes what Chuva is really all about in a few words. Aziva sachet bilvad, as you recall, we spoke about this novelty of Al Trimah, that clarity of Al Trimah. It means just simply stop sinning. Don't mix anything else into Chuva, other than the the uh, the ceasing to sin, and so on. Like again, we spoke about this at length in the previous classes. Though we do understand that primarily tshuva, for its in, in simple sense, it doesn't negate the fact that primarily tshuva is about stopping to sin. That it is about someone chas v'shalom rachman and has sinned, and he returns to Hakadosh Baruch in the, in, in the context of repentance, penitence, that he returns, he gives up on his previous he experiences, he, he regrets them, but namely, as the Altarebbe says, yes, regret, but it's all leading to one idea, one idea uh, only, which is the idea of ceasing to sin. That's that's the point of Chuba, stopping to sin. If I was lax in the mitzvah say I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to start um, doing it in mitzvah say There is action, speech, and thought, and so on. I'm going to start doing it and doing it right. If chas v'shalom, I violated this. Is what Hashem says not to do. No one is the leisa. So I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to speak about it. And again, an aveda associated with divor. Not going to think. Because we know there's many violations and many transgressions associated to thought. It means literally aziba sachet dovad. And then on top of that, if you remember, in Perik Beis, we, without, we, we introduced the idea of fasting. But again, not fasting the way it's in its association with tshuva. Tshuva is tshuva, and fasting is fasting. 
So what is that supposed to mean? It's a click away. Any of the previous classes, we explained it very thoroughly. The difference of a chatos and a korban ayla. Again, you, wherever you're watching the class, those of you who are joining, um, understand what, what, is it, what does it mean that al Rebbe does introduce the idea of fasting, but completely separated from the idea of tshuva, a total compartmentalization between the two. And again, those who follow, but again, those who want to see, wherever you're watching this, it's always worthwhile to go, maybe as well, to the Tanya Online, to the original site, as we mentioned, namely for the newcomers, tanyaonline.com, tanyaonline, one word, dot com. Easy to follow the present class, as you notice, there's a separate scroll bar for the, for the uh, text, and you have all the previous classes lined up on the left side, and they open up in the same fashion. Easy to follow and easy to find the, the subject for learning. You know, the, the, uh, the particular uh, um, uh, within the class itself, any, any subject, any idea, it's easy to find. Again, you have the scroll bar right there, and you're able to move, move along wherever you want in the class. And again, all the classes and Gersa Truva and all the previous classes that we merited to conclude and learn. Uh, learn and conclude all, all lined up, and um, it's worthwhile because the famous expression, that each part of Teda complements another, and of course, the Gedis Mitzvah subjects learned in the Gedis Atshuva in Kuti Amorim, the first part of Tanya, contribute to the understanding of all the Chsidis, and particularly the segments which are within the Sefer of Tanya itself, in this case, again, it's a So tanyaonline.com, uh, previous, and again, this message of the fasting, how does it go together with this, which the Altarev says, Tshuva is a ziva sachet bilvad, it just simply means ceasing, stopping to sin, how does it go together? It's all a click away, we begin, Peri Gimel. The wise of the latter generation, al Rebbe is writing the Achreinim, meaning to say those who came in those generations which were true Chachme HaMusar. Chachme HaMusar means Chachme HaMusar. To give Musar is easy. Or it's easy, it's not necessarily always associated with wisdom. Interesting, the expression Chachme HaMusar. That what does Musa have to do with Chachma? Because to give Musa, you have to also be a Chacham to understand that the Musa has to be presented in a way that resonates with the other party. Which for this you need chachma. In any in in, in any case, I'll never write the the latter chachma chachma and musa nechel could they argue? The misha chota cheta echad pamim rabbi. Somebody sinned with a particular sin many times. The yeshemim. What does the argument consist of? There's those who say should tzarech lisanis misperatzumis leisachet pamim rabbi. Kefiyah misperasach asher chot. The no one needs to sin. The amount of fast to that sin many times based on or commensurate to the amount of sin times that he sinned. For example, we learned in the previous chapter, again in the chart of that Izzel, if you recall, or, which is predicated on the stories of the Gemara, that even Al Dover Kalho Yimisani Tanis Harbe, even something like they used to fast, these Tanoim and Amiroim used to fast many fasts. Some different places in Gemara, but Al-Tarebbe quite a, quotes a few. And al Rebbe says on this basis, the Harizal established this old chart of, of, of enum, enumerating, enumerating different sins and noting that to that sin, one has to fast so many and so many fasts. As we mentioned, even somebody becoming angry, losing your temper, becoming angry, 151 fasts. We spoke about this, perhaps maybe... People should uh, uh, appreciate this idea that losing your temper, 151 fasts. But again, Al Tebe introduces, he says, Vechulu, etc. Of course, he doesn't go through the entire list, but Darizal has a list. 
on different Avedas, how much you have to fast. That you have to fast. How much you have to fast. How many fasts you have to fast corresponding to this sin, so much. This sin, so many fasts. And again, there is a whole chart. And the Arizal is very explicit. So now, for example, let's take this, just this latter ex- example which al uh, brings. In this previous chapter, as part of the chart of the Arizal, Alakas, losing it, losing one's temper, 151 fasts. Okay. Lost my temper. The next 151 days, one is fasting. One loses his temper, he's fasting. But what if he loses his temper twice? <laughs> That's pretty much, that takes care almost of the entire year. I don't think you fast on Shabbos, but that's pretty much taking care of all the weekdays of the year. And what if you what if you lost your temper three times? Did anybody ever lose their temper three times? No, probably not. <laughs> never, never. You're not supposed to lose your temper. If you get angry, it's as if you committed idolatry. We explained last week the idea. Is the clear idea or the message of idolatry when someone gets angry it wasn't supposed to be that way when Hashem says yes it's supposed to be that way I, I orchestrated that it should be that way but again we spoke about this last week what is it why would there be such an expression of someone who gets angry it's as if he's every he commits idolatry the uh, sin most great one of the cardinal sins which is Avedazara is tagged to Becoming angry, losing one's temper. Why so? We explain this again. This is the idea. There is a Zara aspect to it. So, so if somebody, so of course we don't lose our temper because it's Gila But let's say someone loses his temper once, 151 fast. But what if you did it twice? So if every one of these sins, that again, based on this chart of the Arizal, there is a tag to it how many fasts you have to fast based on that sin. So the argument is there's those who say that if you sin twice that very sin, you have to fast. The amount of sin, fast commensurate to the amount of time that you sin. For example, someone loses his temper twice, let's say. Let's say. Theoretically, let's say, right? Someone loses his temper twice, he has to fast. 302 sins. It's times. 302 two, uh, two times. And if it's three times, it's 353 times, 353 fasts. That's their opinion. This is the machleik, is the nechliku. They argued, these chachmeh musa, there's those who say that every evening you repeat the very same sin, you have to fast based on the amount of times that you sin. And if that sin has that amount, of that chart again of that easel, has that amount of fasts, that one has to fast. Uh, corresponding to that sin, so if you did it again, if you double uh, that sin, you have to fast twice, based number twice meaning to say, twice the amount of fasts which are tagged to that sin. The Yeshem Rim, oh no, it continues, al explains, he goes on, before he brings the other opinion, which is, again, we did speak about this in the previous class towards the end of ch- first chapter. It's worth, to, 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 uh, it's worth to, to note this, which we noted in that very first chapter, that if you notice, and famously, the al wrote the entire Yigeda Satshuva to deal with this very sin of Meitzizer al somebody wasting seed, the seed, seed of life, in vain. We did mention how the Rebbe did this so classically, uh, rather with such class and with such perfection and with such nuanced sensitivity. I don't want to repeat what we mentioned then, but you see the Rebbe in one hand again famously wrote the Geras HaTshuva to deal with this very sin. We spoke about this. I don't want to take even any even in a moment. We did speak about this. Very, uh, we took the time, but nonetheless, in the in the I believe it's in the end of the first chapter. Nonetheless, the Al Terebe wrote to get us a tshuva, based on. Also, we explained then that a person has to be successful. Chas never repeat this sin, 
So even studying about it, studying about the levels of it, uh, the manners of tshuva to this sin has to be with maximum sensitivity. We did speak about this despite the gravity of the sin. And Alter Rebbe, no, like the Alter Rebbe points this out so clearly and so emphatically. This is something, again, which is spoken about. Someone just opens up the Yimara uh, Nida, the second chapter. This is probably the most gravest sin. The Alter Rebbe writes this in a famous chapter. In the beginning of the Yimara Nida, in the end of the seventh chapter, we get us age of 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 the Kuti Amorim, also a click away, the end of the seventh chapter, the Kuti Amorim, towards the end, towards the end, probably a second to the last class, that we speaks as, classifies the sin, that it's uh, one of the gravest, even much more than even violations of, other violations of promiscuity, promiscuous rather, violations, this is even more grave, we did speak about it then also, and therefore, the Al Tareba has this. In in one hand, he does demonstrate that it's uh, very clearly, and again, this is the reason why he wrote the entire Geras Hatshuva. We mentioned this Pedik in Nida. It's it brings a mabul. It's to the entire world. It's something which is probably the gravest sin of all sins, from a certain perspective and point of view. And again, it's it's, uh, it's worthwhile to see to learn the Gemara. It's Pasha to in Nigla, this is Gemara in 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 in, in, in Sitre Musa, It does say it, it, it's brought up, brought about uh, in so many Sfarim, the uh, demonstrating the gravity of the sin of the Al Tareb himself. You know, I mean, we don't have to go far. The Al Tareb in it's worthwhile to see the lashon of the Al Tareb in the seventh chapter of. And it says the Holy Ghost of Truva was really dealing with this sin, even though the Al-Tarebbe, in a very, very sensitive um, manner, deals with this as much as, again, this dichotomy. In this, he gets a Truva, on one hand, demonstrates the, the gravity of this sin, and the other hand, it's so distinct than any other safer, any other safer, who deals with the tikkun. The correction of the sin is so distinct and so different. And again, this is who the Alter Rebbe was, that perfection, dealing with every matter with maximum perfection. And in this case also, you learn it, you start realizing it a bit later, the Alter Rebbe, oh, he means, now he means the whole message, and for that matter, the entire Geras HaTshuva is about this idea, and it takes time even to realize, but you realize why the Alter Rebbe wrote it in this fashion, is for the very reason that um, like he did everything with maximum, like uh, um, uh, uh, an executive writing, if you will, an executive writing in a, in a, in a, with class, and namely to walk out of the Geras HaTshuva with a complete success story, not just something mediocre and and uh, falling back, namely falling back to the same idea that someone could really be successful to have this whole subject behind them 100%. Again, this is the al Rebbe. This is the al Rebbe. So again, we did mention this in the previous chapter. Look, we said we're not going to take time. I believe it's the end of Pedic Aleph. So the al Rebbe, from all the sins, in the chart of the Arizal, he, 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 he depicts this one. So getting back to this argument between Chachmei and Musar Achreinim, somebody who is, extracts the seed of life in vain, the amount of fasts which are explicit in the Tikkuni Tshuva of that result, on that chart, is pei daletainis, 84 fasts. So what if Chotah Baza Eser Eser Pamim? So what if someone, God forbid, sinned with this very sin 10 or 10 or 20 times? Adarach Mashal, an example. Tzorich Lisanis Eser Eser Pamim. Pei Dalet V'chein L'Eulam is the opinion of those Chachmei Amusar, which hold again that if you did the sin again, you double that sin, triple, and so, in other words, you did it more than once, you have to fast commensurate to the amount of sin on that chart of the Arizal. Corresponding to every time you sin, that sin. So it's not somebody who, if the Arizal writes there's 84 fasts, it's not that Chas V'Shalom some violated this twice, he fasts the same 84. No, 84 for once. He did it twice. 
So it's double that. You did it three times, it's double that. It's three times that, which is 252 times. Mm. And if Chas Shalom, as Al Rebbe says, if it was 10 or 20 times, he has to fast 10 or 20 times corresponding to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, the 84 fasts. If you Chas Shalom, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, 10 times, so it's 840 fasts. 20 times would be, um, 20 times would be uh, 1,600 and 80 times and 80 fasts. As an example, I say this number because Al Tareb said Esed Esrim Pamim Pei Dalit, and so on and so forth. Rachman Alitzlan, of course. Dumia the Kol Machatos Shekarv Lahavi Kol Al Kol Pam Pam. Where do we find this predicate in Tera? Is that there that if you sin the same sin time and again, you have to bring, you have to repeat this action which brings you this atonement? We find it in Tera. That if Chas V'Shalom is someone sin violated in a particular Avedo, he has to bring a Karma Chatos. What if you did the same sin twice before you brought the Karbon? No, I'm bringing a Karbon and it's the same sin. I ate uh, Chaylev, let's say, as an example. I wasn't supposed to eat this and I ate it, so I'm going to bring the Karbon. And by mistake, I fell through again. And of course, Chatos is for Shege. When someone does something inadvertently, and I just lost it again, and I ate it again, so I'm bringing the carbon. I don't have to go bring two animals, apparently, one would say. It's the same sin. It's, if I did two separate sins, I understand. I have to shlep two carbonis, bring two carbonis, two sacrifices, but the same sin again, and I and I experienced it before I brought the carbon. So if I brought the carbon, of course, I believe that I have to bring another carbon, because the carbon is in sacrifice because I brought the sacrifice and Ahmad Islam is one slipped again, so he has to bring another one. That also makes sense. But if I did it all before I brought the sacrifice, apparently one should be enough. Tata says no. Even if you did it time and again prior to bringing the sacrifice, and again, this very same sin, because one can argue maybe even two separate sins, because I didn't bring the curry, the sacrifice, and Tata says on that you bring a chatas, a chatas is a chatas, is a chatas, so let me have one for all the sins, but then I can appreciate it's two distinct types of sins, so even I did it prior to me bringing the sacrifice, I should bring two, let's say, but what about the same one, the same sin, and I didn't bring the carbon yet, shouldn't one be enough? Tata says no, and this has nothing to do with the argument, this is a clear Pasuk and Tata, a clear halacha, that if you did the same sin time and again, you have to bring another chatas, and this is the basis for this opinion that Every one, every sin which demands, based on the Rizal's chart, number of fasts, every time Rechman al-Islam, God forbid, the person repeats the sin, he has to fast, uh, corresponding to that, to that um, sin, in other words, the amount of fast, corresponding to the sin, time and again. The Yesh and others of these Chachmi HaMusar, Medamin, Yenzel, Korbanel, they equate it to a carbonella. In other words, they also have a basis, a predicate in Teira, which they equate. It's not just to say, nah, it's too much over here. The question is what Teira has to say. So they have a basis in Teira regarding another carbon, which is the carbonella, which spoke about, Havah Mitzvah say, which comes namely on a Mitzvah say in a positive Mitzvah, right? The Chattas is usually on a negative Mitzvah, which someone did Bishegi. Not purposely, in other words, inadvertently. The the oila comes a mitzvah say, and the halacha is that filo over a mitzvah come a mitzvah say that even somebody violates in a number of mitzvah say miskaper beilachas, he is atoned with one oila. Can you see the gemara perikam in the zvachim like it says in gemara in the first chapter of zvachim that if chas v'shalom some violated say before he brought his carbon before he brought his sacrifice. He violated, violated again a mitzvah, so say a positive mitzvah. One carbon is enough. So they say that based on that, you do find the idea that one carbon would look after multiple sins. So chas v'shalom, someone violated any of these sins, or the sin Achman al-Tzlam and al-Tarebbe deals with, even Achman al someone did it once or twice or three times, violated rather once or twice or three times this sin. So one set a fast, in this case, 84 fasts, would be suffice, is the opinion of the other Chachmei HaMusar. What is the Achra HaMukobeles? What is the reconciliation? What is the way that the Yid needs to adapt? 
Yidin need to adapt. Ain't the Hashem need to adapt. Those who want to really do tshuva need to adapt to. What do we do? We have an argument. And uh, of course, it's a great difference, Rechman al-Islam, which means really, if we accept the opinion of the, this first opinion, one should really never eat from the moment he learns about this for perpetuity, perhaps, because, and again, it's not only regarding this sin, the chart of the Arizal loses his temper twice, that takes care of, again, all the, problem, all the weekdays of the year, plus, plus, perhaps, or plus, so we, people should stop eating. I mean, even to do it once is something which takes up so much of the days which would need to, one would need to fast in those days. And it doesn't mean that a person only sins one sin. If he sins any of these, of the, of the chart of that easel, he's already fasting so many days of his lifetime, if you will. But still, this is something that could be organized and arranged. In other words, something that still, there's an area to establish. These days I'm going to fast, and these days I don't need to fast. 84 is a big number. 151 is certainly a big number. But nonetheless, okay, that's the, uh, I'm going to try to divide it in a year, two years, however it is. Compare that to somebody repeating the same sin. Achman al-Salaam, al writes more than once, 10, 20, whatever. It's something which is, the difference is, Vast. So, what does one do? Achrav kubelis means what is the, the 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 which what is the acceptance re- reconciliation? In other words, uh, which is practical to implement between the two opinions. So, what is it? Lisane is gimul pamim. Kifi mispar hatzum is the chetze. To fast three times the amount. A fast corresponding to that sin. For example, this very sin, Dal Teba writes that even the Chaman Mitzvah, someone's violated. As the Al Tereba, three, four, five, or Dal Teba writes rather 10 or 20 times, the Achram, the what is accepted between the two opinions, the, 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 uh, in other words, the between the two opinions, what, what do we implement? What is the correct way to follow? In order to be atoned for via or of tone, again, of mixed trouble, or to have that, that, that advantage or the result of fasting towards these sins in actuality, in other words, to, to, in, in our Abba, in the Abba, Hashem of the Yid, is to fast three times the amount of fasts corresponding to that sin. Even he sinned many more times, three times the amount would be suffice. As an example, going back, the Altarebbe goes back to the very same sin. Reishin and Beis, so much so it's all Sheikh Vatel Vatel. 252 fast to this above mentioned sin of extracting the seed of life in vain, which is again three times. So the and, and, he, and he says, the Chaim Shachatayim Abayim, and so too in other sins, violations, transgressions like. Now, what is this supposed to mean? It's just like, ah, it's too much. Let's just get something in between three times. It sounds good. No. In Torah, we know that everything what a, what a Yid does or doesn't do is all based in the, in, 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 uh, it's all predicated on the mandate of Torah. There's a reason for everything in our Rabbi Hashem. It's not just like yeah, this, this, like we spoke about, I think, last week, yeah, this looks good, this looks holy. To me, it's holy. It feels holy. No, 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 it does what Hashem wants. We don't establish our own um, service because it feels good and it looks good and so on. We're usually not going to get it right anyways. Of course not, because it's man-made as opposed to God-made. We don't have to explain the difference the difference is not just a, a, a difference, it's just like there's nothing There's nothing in common. This is something which feels good. We did mention last week, everything has to be based on Tadus, Emes, to find what Hashem wants from us. It's about Avedis Hashem, it's our submission to Avedis, if it feels good, looks good. In the end of the day, a Yid has to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and he has to find out what Hashem wants from him. Now when he decided that this is going to bring him close to Hashem, we spoke about this, and, and the same thing over here. Yeah, this is, sounds uh, one even once 
to follow the chart once is a big deal, as we can only appreciate. To have every single time the person would sin, that he has to fast, that amount of fast corresponding to that sin. I mean, you're not giving a person chance. Okay, let's try to get something in between. Let's, even, even once is a lot, but three times sounds good. Don't push it too much, because the other opinion is certainly overwhelming, and it is. So let's try to find something between. No, the Altenebra is Vahatam. In everything Yiddish Kite, there's a reason. It's not just, okay, three times. It feels good. It sounds good. Something in between. Don't get me going. Too much for me, and I'll lose it. Let's just suddenly find something which is a balanced type of Avedis uh, Hashem. In this case, balanced type of Tshuva. No, Vahatam, the Altenebra writes. There is a reason for this. Pimash calls Bezeir HaKedish, based on what it says in Zeir HaKedish. Say Pasha Snayach, in the end of Pasha Snayach, Kivin the Chabar Nash Kamiko Chibrich. It's actually interesting. It says Nayach, it says this, this sin with Altrib, it deals with it, brings Mabala, anything which is a worldwide disruption, in other words, something which is a, a worldwide um, um, you know, catastrophe, if you will. Something like the Mabel. Based on this Gemara, and the Zayir elaborates on this, it's associated with this sin. As it says then, that was the, one of the reasons the Hashem brought a Mabel to the world. Again, it's brought in the Gemara and in the Zayir. It's lush interesting to say, Pashas Neach maybe he speaks about it there. But Akaponim, back to what, in other words, what, what is the quote over here? That Kivin the Chabar Nash Kumikuchabrichu. He says, what is the reason of this number three? Because when somebody, when men, Barnash means men, when the human being sins for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Zimna Chodo, in other words, in the face of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Rachman Litzla, and Zimna Chodo of Rishimu. The first time he makes a mark. And the mark is, second time, the mark penetrates. And the third time, Zimna Tlisa, the third time, is Spashata Kismo, the stain penetrates from one side to the other. Therefore, the number, this, this, this kind of balanced approach, not just because let's find something in between. No, therefore, the amount of fast is also three times. So what is the Zayir telling us over here? The Zayir is telling us, just like, just take a, take a, uh, and he's referring to any sin. He's not referring, maybe there he's talking about the sin, but generally, Al-Tarebbe writes, with Shach is also, one gets angry, loses his temper, ten times is three fasts. Why three fasts if he lost his temper ten times? So a monitor, if you go according to this opinion, it should be once. Even losing one's temper ten times. According to the other opinion, one should be enough. What's the number three? That even, as an example, someone loses his temper ten times, nonetheless he still fasts 353 fasts. Uh, 400, 400, I said 300 before. 453 fasts. Why so? He says because the fast, the, 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 the sin ultimately stains the Nishama. We spoke about this many times. We're not going to go into it now. A sin stains the neshama. We spoke about it in the context of punishment. Hashem doesn't punish people like we think about punishment, tit for tat, you sin to me, I'll show you who's boss. No. That's not a good book. Of course not. Even writes in the Tate, don't take revenge, but we know him as a God. He's a God. We know him He's a compassionate God, a merciful God. This whole stuff doesn't, you have to negate it. Negating it seems even some silly. But if you ever, you ever go to a washing machine and you look at everything being smashed and, and 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 twisted and turned and everything and imagine if one human being would have that experience probably won't come out whole or won't come out very damaged and you look at the clothes and your clothes theoretically they're able to talk you say what are you doing to me what do you mean what I'm doing to you the clothes don't ask what you're doing to you. it's the best experience theoretically if they had any sensation to the clothes that it's, were cleaning you up before that you didn't have a good odor and now we're cleaning you up and you come out so fresh and so beautiful so it's a good thing that we're putting you into the washing machine and the same thing when there's Hashem reprimands and has for shalom. Uh, Hashem punishes a person even though we ask Hashem and if we ask Hashem, Hashem himself establishes that there is some this midah within him 
in the terms of Kabbalah, Sivs, Lomayla, Misei, the Rishtal, Shulaz, Yud, Gimel, Mil, Sarachmim, like we say every day in Kishma Shalamita, the Rebbeinu Shalaylam, and in Kishma Shalamita, we ask Yom Kippur, which is the Yom Slichol, the Chapor, the Day of Atonement and Forgiveness. We mess many times, we ask Hashem, you can erase something even without affliction of pain, and without any tzaras and so on, without any punishment, you just made the experience of the punishment itself, Hashem, you're greater that you can do it, and Hashem can do it, and we with the come of full heart, and we ask, and again, it's not our request, something which we made up, it's part of this, which Abchik Nesak Dela incorporated into Davening, says that this is based on the Anhai Yisri Bahari Kaidesh, like everything else, <clears throat> the Abchik Nesak had understood and knew and as such established and constituted the prayer to its detail and its exact makeup. So we will be able to elicit that part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu itself, but regularly we know that a sin makes a stain, and when HaKadosh Baruch Hu punishes a person, it's just because he's there to clean up the stain. That's about it. And if it's an Elam Abban, as we learned later, we learned later, if this person's lucky, it's an Elam Azar. Rahman al-Itzlan, the should give everybody cult to in in all areas of life, in apparent and revealed good, of course. But we're, let's talk about this: what the Aveda does and what the concept or the idea behind punishment is. It's like somebody which, uh, like we mentioned the other day, some as a child rather play around with an unclean diaper, as opposed to the adult coming and cleaning it up. But only then it starts crying. No, this is the good part. Or the child which is rushed, rushed to the doctor because some glass is penetrated and the doctor, mm, their, their skin or their foot, because they were not careful running around and being indifferent to the warning for that matter of the parent to the adult to walk around with that bare feet because glass might uh, enter into you and the glass enters and they're okay, they continue playing and for that matter even after coming back from the doctor they're going back to the same area, barefoot and so on the story of our life we don't, we don't really go back and pay attention to the problem and when it comes to the good part which the parent rushes the child to the doctor the doctor starts tr- working on extracting the glass to save the child's life perhaps and then puts rubbing alcohol and the child is screaming and can't believe that the parents are such monsters. They took them to this place and the strangers are putting, they're hurting them. The parents are obviously feeling bad. They're not smiling. But nonetheless, the parent is so excited that the child is being treated to take out the glass. The glass is the problem. The pain, there's pain when you try to extract the glass as an example. So what the child is supposed to lament, it doesn't, it's indifferent two, which is running around, allowing the glass to go in. And when, where is the child lament? When there is a cure, and somewhat we can see the story of our life. The, the punishment is the cleansing process. That's by definition the positive, which is transpiring in a Kaddish Baruch Hu's, um, in a Kaddish Baruch Hu's not only willingness, but determination, because he loves us so much to clean us up. Can it be without Yisurim? Yes, and Mezuz Hashem will be mechayk brachem mechad barab loy Yisurim mechaloy mrein. But we're talking about the concept of the punishment itself. That is good. So the uh, the Zayar says there that when somebody, for example, sins, and again, illustrating the stain which is um, impacting the neshama, the stain which is penetrating the neshama. So take, for example, someone, a stain, like, you know, the, the spaghetti or the, uh, sorry, the, 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 the sauce stain. In the beginning, it just touches the garment, the shirt, as an example. You, and, and, and then the same amount of, or that same stain, when you know, the same, uh, uh, if it's oil or if it's a... Uh, if it's a if it's a uh, sauce, as an example, it goes in the same place. So the the stain starts penetrating the garment, the material. Not necessarily, if you'll turn around that material, that you'll see the stain on the other side, but it starts penetrating. If it happens a third time, there's a possibility or a probability that you'll turn around that same garment. And yeah, now it's penetrated, and it's on both sides. So now if it happens a fourth time, 
the fourth time you doesn't you don't see. Of course, every time Rahman al you're dirtying your garment, it becomes more dirty. But it's not indicative of anything additionally happening through the fourth time. Why? Because the state has penetrated on both sides already. So as such, and based on that, and this is the Lashon of Zayar, the Zimun that we saw the third time already, the stain has crossed from one side to the other. So categorically, when the sin is, happens again, you didn't add anything. It's already fully stained. So the structure of the stain is there, and you have to start cleaning it. You focus on whatever detergent, let's say, you need, and the strength of the detergent is an example to clean up the stain which penetrated from one side of the garment to the other. When it's on just on one side, you take a little soap and you clean it up, but if it's penetrated to the end, you need to do more in order to uproot the stain. So therefore, in that context, the fourth time, it doesn't add to the stain because it's already penetrated to the other side. So you're dealing with three, says the Zayar, and therefore when you have to clean up, in the end of the day, you just look after the three, the detergent, in this case, the fasting, what corresponds the number three. And therefore, this is the basis of this hachra, hamakobelas, this which is accepted again between the two opinions, the fast three times the amount corresponding to that sin, based on this zayar, which again gives this illustration that in the end of the day, you have to deal with that number three because overtly the stain which is added the fourth time and doesn't affect the garment. If you look at it as it is, it, it, once it's penetrated, it penetrates to the other side. Regarding the garment itself, it's not going anywhere. Maybe it expands, or maybe it would go even further to whatever is in the other. But you're talking about the garment itself, in this case, the neshama, the neshama, Rahman al every time a person sins, it stains the neshama. And then the second time, it penetrates more. And the third time, unfortunately, it's a deeply stained in neshama from one side to the other. Again, in neshama, it's not something physical. You could say one side, one side to the other. But this is, the, based on this, what it says in Zayir, it's like a full-fledged stain that needs to be dealt with. It needs to be dealt with. Thus, the three times the amount of spas corresponding to the sin, even if it was more than three times. We will stop over here. Yet, we will just note that we have to understand this, how can we deal with this matter in practicality, in actuality, to implement this, to execute this whole notion of fasting in our life, apparently from the person who ever learns this, Zayar, learns this, Arizal, learns this, again, you know, fat, uh, eating, is really off the table for, for again, you mentioned for perpetuity. What is this supposed to mean? How do we implement something like that? Now, Tereb is going to speak about this in the Bez Hashem the next week. We look forward <clears throat> going on on this very, again, which al begins, we have to understand what it means today to us in this generation. And again, it's these generations vis-a-vis the previous generations would dealt with this notion of fasting. Every person himself, there's different times, different periods in his life and so on, which we're going to learn about.